Welcome visitors and faithful subscribers to Monet Cafe. I'm excited about today's lesson because it's going to really help the beginner. It's for everyone, but it's using a limited palette. A lot of times we don't have that many pastel selections as a new uh, pastel artist. And uh, this lesson is going to be great because it helps us focus on a limited palette. And I wanted to just say a personal thank you to everyone who has just helped with the success of this channel. Never did I imagine that it would start to grow so quickly. And at the point of this video, we're just eight people away from 16,000 subscribers. And I would have to say, I think the reason for the growth is because you guys like to learn. You don't want to just sit and watch somebody paint. You love all of the knowledge about art color theory, and so many other things that we talk about on this channel. So I'm so glad you're here. If you haven't subscribed, I hope you will. All right, let's get started. Now first, let me describe what a high key painting is. It's the area that is the lighter side of the value scale. Now, unfortunately, this one is numbered from one to 10, 10 being the darkest, but that's not really correct. This is a gray scale and value finder, and it shows you that um, the values from lightest to darkest but the darkest actually is value one. I know this is very teeny, but value one is the darkest going all the way around the value scale to the lightest, which is value 10 on this. So the lighter or values are the higher numbers on the value scale. Don't let that confuse you. Um, just get one. It's, it's really inexpensive on any art supply store. But for this painting, we're focusing on those lighter values, which are going to be the bottom ones that you see on this grayscale finder. Now here is the limited selection of pastels I've chosen and they're going from lightest on this side, on the right side, over to darkest. And I think before it was all done, I mean there may be 12 to 14 here, I maybe had 15 pastels or so. Um, but this is a, on the lighter side of the value scale. Now here I put up one of the darker pastels so you can see, that's not even the darkest, that wouldn't be the, um, the darkest on the value scale and uh, that's the ones we are not going that high, okay? So we're keeping a very limited high key, meaning lighter values for this particular painting. And when I say high key, just keep in mind those are the higher numbers um, and that value finder has little keys in it. So um, that might help you to remember what high key values are. I recently had an interesting question about how hard it is to find those middle values. Well, let me give a quick tip. If you convert your photo, if you take a picture of your pastel selections and you convert the photo to black and white, it makes it a little easier to determine value. I've got a few of them, you know, a little out of order here, but those middle values, they can be hard. So uh, try that little trick and maybe it'll help. Now here's a website that I really found so interesting and it has so much great information and actually a lot of it is uh, some information that I'm going to share in another video about uh, how our color wheel is actually not the correct color wheel the one we're typically used to so that's for another video but let's scroll down here by the way this uh, I'll include the link to this uh, this site here um, it's ECG productions and um, let me scroll down here this is some stuff about the color wheel but I'm gonna go down to this interesting information I'm just gonna read this uh, fairly quickly here it's on color association so this has to do with what we're gonna be talking about in this lesson about a limited uh, value uh, range which is uh, in the higher key is what we're doing meaning the lighter values but I'm gonna show you how it works the same what we're describing here with color as it does in value. So let me read this and then I'll explain what I mean. Color association. Many famous artists have studied and played with color, but one name in particular is synonymous with modern color theory. Joseph Albers. Albers was a German artist who studied and taught at the Bauhaus School in Germany before coming to America and teaching at the Black Mountain College. Joseph Albers eventually went on to teach at Yale, where he primarily studied colors and the ways they interact with one another. I would like this guy, you know? I mean, because I'm just fascinated with color. It's so interesting. It's actually very mathematical. Um, he developed the theory of the interaction of color. And it's probably most famous for his exploration of chromatic interactions in his series of square paintings. Okay, so let's go on and uh, figure out what, what he's trying to show or teach here. Albers' homage to the square. Albers discovered that colors can appear differently depending on the colors surrounding them. This is such an important thing you can learn as an artist that's really going to help you grow. In fact, you can create some interesting illusions by placing colors next to or within field of another colors. 
other colors. In both of the examples below, Albers placed the same color inside the fields of other color. The two green squares are the same color square. Um, so look at these. It, it's pretty obvious this one looks lighter and this one looks darker. They're not. Okay, if I could drag one over here, you're going to see I'm going to do something in Photoshop where I, I will do just that. You can drag one over here. You'll see they're exactly the same color. I think he actually shows this below. Same with these X's. One looks darker and one looks lighter. Um, and here's where he did exactly that. He took this and just expanded this green and it's the same color. But even if you look at it, doesn't it look like you're, you're getting like this illusion in your mind of it going from darker to lighter? Doesn't it look that way? It's so interesting. Um, and the same thing here, you can see they really are the same color. Um, and some of you may be familiar with the infamous blue dress, you know, is it blue, is it white, is it whatever, and that all had, I'm not going to go into that, that all had to do with, you know, what colors are surrounding it. All right, so let me show you something that I did, the same idea using just value, um, and I did an example in Photoshop. Now here is a similar example that I've used with value instead of color and it's interesting to see that it works the same way. Now take a look at these two squares. Um, they are of different value. Obviously one is very light, the one on the left, and the other is a darker value. Now the two squares that you see in the middle, the smaller ones, similar to the color example, are exactly the same color or shade or value and uh, it's interesting isn't it how the one surrounded by the dark square uh, looks lighter than the one surrounded by the light square perfect example of how value is affected by what surrounds it what values and colors surround it so you know just to prove that um, let me grab one of these boxes let's see this one here I'm gonna pull it down here let's put it right here and now I'm going to pull the other one over and ta-da, sure enough, it's the same color. Isn't that interesting? So that's what I'm hoping to um, teach in this lesson is that once we learn some of these rules, we're going to really expand or grow as an artist um, when we can make value and color work in our favor. All right, let's get started. Now, of course, this information helps with painting in general, but I'd like to describe to you why this really helps in understanding high key painting and how value is dependent on what's around it. Notice in this Monet painting, uh, the dark is, there's not many uh, values in this. It's very limited, high key. And here's another one. Um, notice that uh, the darkest dark is not all that dark. It'd probably be that little arch under the bridge in this particular painting and even in the one before that. But that if, is not a very dark, uh, value if you were to hold it up to a really dark pastel. So these examples help us to understand um, what we mean by a limited palette uh, because we're just staying in that high key or lighter value range of the value scale. All right, let's get started with some painting. Yay! This is an example of a high key painting that I I really liked, and please forgive me, I forgot the name of the artist <laughs> that I got this from, but uh, it was just a lovely example of a high key painting. And what I decided to do was to do a little quick um, uh, example of it myself. I used a photograph in here, thank you to Annette Meyer Atkins from our member reference on, on our Facebook group, and I did a little quick um, value study with just three values there, actually four including white, and I did a quick little painting with a higher key limited palette. Now, for this particular painting, what I thought would be neat was to take a painting I've already done that was not in high key. This is a, a much wider range of the value scale. My darks in there, if you notice, are really dark, and my lights are really light with that sky. Um, it was on a homemade surface that kind of had that terracotta color, so I decided to use a piece of color fix um, pastel paper um, to work on. Now there's my grayscale value finder using the higher key or the lighter values for this particular painting. Now here I am putting it next to the pastels I've chosen. I think I've kind of got them a little uh, in disarray there but um, anyway you can see that that's not many pastels okay my darkest dark is probably that dark teal blue and that um, bright red there. Okay so I'm just speeding this up two times. Notice I um, I took a, um, actually took another painting that was the dimensions I wanted and just made a, a rectangle around it. I think it's probably like a 
ooh, a six by nine or something like that. But that um, pinkish red that I'm using right there is actually one of the darker pastels that I've chosen, other than the dark, darker teal blue that I chose. Um, I'm getting that down kind of more for even more warmth. Um, of the, the color of the paper is already warm, but um, that's actually going to be one of my darkest darks, which is kind of interesting because it looks lighter because it's on the darker surface. Just like in our example before, value is dependent upon what surrounds it. All right, so I'm getting in some of the sky colors there. I got in some of that uh, darker blue in the background, but of course the sky is going to be the lightest value. And um, I'll try to put this photo up here too for you to have a reference to look at. So I'm just kind of um, getting sky values in to kind of establish values. I like to do that early on in the painting, kind of quickly get in my lightest light and my darkest dark. Um, and that's, um, that's what I'm doing here. But I want you to pay attention to how the values change as I add more values and colors to it. Um, because right now those, those lights look really light, which they are going to continue to throughout the painting. But those pinks that I put down for the tree don't look that, they look kind of light, don't they? But uh, in the end, you'll see I make that same pink color, the color of the flowers that are in the foreground, and they're gonna end up appearing darker in the foreground. Now there's my darkest blue right there, okay? So now you can easily see, if you have trouble with value, you can definitely, I'm sure you can see, that's the darkest value. If I converted this to black and white, you would see the blue and the pinkish reds there now are appearing as the darkest thing in the scene. Now what that pink did is it just gave a nice little glow behind it on top of even the terracotta color. So now foregrounds are typically darker. The, the thing that you see first in your vision um, is the foreground. And so I'm going to go ahead and kind of establish a little trail to lead the eye back into the painting. I didn't do that in my other one, but I thought that would uh, be a nice lead in to the painting. So again, that was my darkest value. Now this pinkish color again is my next to darkest value. So I'm kind of getting that in the foreground and in more of the shadowy areas. The lightest part of the, the landscape or the field is gonna be those greens in the far distance um, in the field back there. All right, see, I'm, I'm gradually getting uh, a little lighter as I go back. Um, let's see here. Now, I'm going to start working with some of the greens I've chosen. My darker greens in value are going to be in the foreground, and my lighter greens are going to be in that distant field in the back. So let me paint a little bit more here and put on some music for you guys, and uh, just kind of pay attention to how the mood of the painting changes with the different values and color choices as I add them. I hope you don't mind, but while I paint, I've often wanted to just read some things that are beautiful to my heart. So enjoy the music and these words. If I speak with the tongues of men and of angels, but do not have love, I have become as a sounding brass or a clanging cymbal. And if I have prophecy and I know all secrets and all knowledge, and if I have all belief so as to remove mountains, but do not have love, I am nothing at all. And if I give out all of my possessions to feed the poor, and if I give my body to be burned, but I do not have love, I am not profited at all. Love is patient, is kind. Love does not envy, love does not boast. It is not puffed up, and it doesn't behave indecently. Love does not seek its own, and is not provoked, and it reckons not with evil. It does not rejoice over the unrighteousness, but rejoices in the truth. It covers all, believes all, expects all, endures all. Love never fails. And whether there be prophecies, they shall cease, or tongues, they shall cease, or knowledge, it shall become inactive. For we know in part, and we prophesy in part, but when that which is perfect has come, then that which is in part shall be done away with. When I was a child, I spoke as a child, I thought as a child, I reasoned like a child. But when I became a man, or a woman, I did away with childish matters. 
For now, we see in a mirror dimly, but then face to face. Now I know in part, but then I shall know as I also have been known. And now these three remain, faith, hope, and love. But the greatest of these is love.
Well, this certainly was a fun lesson for me. I hope it was for you too. And I hope you learned a lot about value and the value scale and the advantages of doing a high key painting, especially if you only have limited pastel supplies. I think sometimes um, we think we have to just get more and more and it'll make our art better. Um, but sometimes it's good to kind of limit ourselves and limit our value ranges. Um, if anything, just to um, focus more on correct painting. Um, sometimes having too many choices is not always a good thing. <laughs> so anyway, I hope you enjoyed this again. And um, if you haven't subscribed already, I really hope you will. And it's always such a blessing to bring these videos to you. My goal is to continue to bring free videos as long as I can. And um, I know it's awesome for me and I hope it's awesome for you. Thanks so much, guys. Happy, happy painting. Thank you.